it's D-U-E, you tell I see you by this point, you're reading my mind, it's time for football, we bout to keep this thing moving, I'm bout it, you're with it, let's do it, we gon' make this thing official, you heard me, if you're the best then let's prove it, the goal is set to have a team become a unit, man, we bout to keep this thing moving, I'm bout it, you're with it, let's do it, we gon' make this thing official, you heard me, if you're the best then let's prove it, the goal is set to have a team become a unit, yeah. Welcome to Football Game Plans NFL All 32 Show. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and today it is all about the Miami Dolphins as we start to take a look at the upcoming 2021 NFL season. We'll take a look around the Dolphins roster, break down both the offensive side of the ball as well as the defensive side of the football, take a look at some training camp tidbits, some reasons for optimism, as well as some causes for concern. But first, let's take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the Dolphins season as we go into our four-minute offense. It is year two for Tua Tagovailoa in what could be described as an interesting rookie season. The second year pro comes at the camp, two years removed from a hip injury, the unquestioned starter, and with a lot of live game reps to pull from last season to get better. To me, this is almost an ideal situation for a young quarterback entering his second season in the NFL. Now, statistically, Tua was solid last year, but found himself getting pulled from a few games at times. He is looking to right those wrongs and instill confidence in the staff and the rest of the team, for that matter, that he is the guy for them long term. The Dolphins finished 22nd in rushing last season, and many thought that they would add a dynamic tailback to help rectify that issue in the NFL draft. Well, that didn't happen, even though they added a back in Jared Dokes out of Cincinnati in the seventh round. The Fins pretty much stayed pat at the position with both Miles Gaskin and Savon Ahmed. Both guys averaged just under 4.4 yards a carry and scored three touchdowns each. The team's inaction shows the confidence that they have in this group, and they, Ahmed and Gaskin, need to reward the confidence that they have in them with more productivity out there on the field in 2021. In only his third season as the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, Brian Flores has made changes to his coordinators each season. This year, it's adding the co-offensive coordinator title to both running backs coach Eric Studsville and tight end coach George Gotze. Both will be tasked with getting the 22nd ranked offense into a better, more consistent situation this season. What will be interesting to see is what type of impact that new quarterback coach Charlie Fry, who played in the NFL for a long time, can have on Tua Tagovailoa, which will be another new set of voices in his ear in only his second season. Miami made a splash in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft by selecting Tua's former teammate in Alabama's Jalen Waddle and Miami Hurricane defensive end Jalen Phillips. Both guys were arguably the best at their respective positions and almost immediately upgrade the fins at both spots. Waddle's speed and explosiveness gives them a legit home run threat in the passing game, while Phillips, to me, is already their best pass rusher. I would expect to see both guys end up on many all-rookie teams before it's all said and done. Gone is Ryan Fitzpatrick, and it's the Tua Tungvaloa show in 2021. Both Tua and the staff hope that that is the case for at least a decade plus. Now, Tua has all the requisite tools to be successful in the NFL. He has a quick release, good accuracy, and a quick passing game, and is excellent in the RPO game as well. Confidence in the scheme and confidence in the fact that he can make mistakes out there on the field without looking over his shoulder every play should help him have a banner year. The club brought in veteran Jacoby Brissett, who is solid in his own right, to serve as the QB2 on the roster, in addition to a short yardage, goal line QB as well, but expect Tua to be the guy from start to finish. To me, this is where I have the biggest concern about the Dolphins offense. While Miles Gaskin and Savon Ahmed both flashed in spurts last year, neither are threatening enough to cause defenses to alter or adjust their game plans for them specifically. Now, if the Fins are planning to let the passing game lead the way with the run game being a compliment, then I completely get it. But that is also banking on Tua being a guy like Kyler Murray where you can throw the football 40 plus times a game, which just doesn't seem plausible. I would also expect free agent signee Malcolm Brown to garner a bevy of snaps, which should help Gaskin and Ahmed and the rookie Jerry Dokes thrive in complementary roles on this roster. Last year, they averaged 105 yards rushing the game. If that can get up to 125 to 128, then they'll be exactly where they need to be within this aspect of their offense. I am most excited about the receiver position for the Dolphins this year. This is a very strong group with Devontae Parker, free agent signee Will Fuller, and rookie Jalen Waddle. Parker is a bona fide number one, and both Waddle and Fuller 
are legit game breakers. Getting back a healthy Preston Williams as another big bodied option inside the red zone. His main issue has been health, but when he's out there on the field, he's productive. Last season, the Dolphins got a steal when they acquired Lynn Bowden Jr. from the Raiders in a preseason trade. He gives them a jack of all trades guy with upside and is coming off of a very good rookie season. With the depth chart being what it is now, it makes things very interesting for Jakeem Grant, who is another explosive option and also has been a fan favorite because of his production and ex his exploits as a returner. One would imagine them bringing in Jalen Waddle kind of makes Grant's role a bit up in the air, but we shall see how it all plays out. Tight end is a stable spot here as well with the athletic and talented Mike Jasicki, who finished second in receiving on a team last year with just over 700 yards and six touchdowns, which actually led the team in that category. Adam Shaheen has potential, but has to stay healthy and bringing in rookie Hunter Long out of Boston College gives them a solid inline option that has good ability in the underneath area of the passing game. And he'll put some pressure on four year vet Durham Smythe for that inline role. So again, solid group here at tight end, which should help Tua's progression go in the right direction. Miami invested heavily in the offensive line back in the 2020 NFL draft with the selections of Austin Jackson, Solomon Kinley, and Robert Hunt. All three were starters last season and had pockets of excellent play. So expect them to take a collective step forward this upcoming season. And the Finns were equally as aggressive this year in, in the offseason by strengthening the trenches, bringing in free agent signing Matt Skura from the Ravens to start at center and taking Notre Dame's Liam Eichenberg in the second round of this year's draft. Both guys are projected as starters. Another free agent signing DJ Fluker gives them a good rotational piece at guard and tackle, as does Michael Dieter at guard. Although he got benched last year, he now provides good depth up front along the offensive line. But keep an eye out for undrafted rookie free agent Robert Jones out of Middle Tennessee State, who worked with the Dolphins staff down at the Senior Bowl this past January and who was one of the more dominant offensive linemen in this year's draft class, in my opinion. You can expect an uptick in performance along the defensive line for the Miami Dolphins this season, bringing in defensive tackle Adam Butler via free agency from the New England Patriots, who shows an ability to get to the quarterback from the inside, just helps add to the potential pass rush capabilities of this group as a whole. They got a breakout season of sorts from defensive end Emmanuel Ogba last year, who led the team in sacks with nine. And defensive tackle Christian Wilkins should see his numbers increase as well, as a result of the talent that's going to be around him. I like his game as a player because he's equally as disruptive on both ends of defense. Speaking of disruptive, that's what they were able to get from second year tackle Raekwon Davis, who ended up making all rookie teams after finishing with 40 tackles on the year. And we'll see a defensive end Jason Strobridge can take a big step forward this season in his second season as he and Zach Seiler provide strong depth along the defensive line. You can make a strong case that the Dolphins have the best linebacking core in the AFC East. Adding Jalen Phillips helps them on both ends as he's a stout run defender as well as a savvy pass rusher. And if Andrew Van Ginkle can build on what he was able to do last season with those five and a half sacks, it gives Miami two very athletic and versatile outside linebackers in their defense that can both add the pressure coming off both ends. But the star of this group is Jerome Baker. He's the eyes and the brains on this defense, leading the team in tackles, last year and has good ability as a blitzer. I'm a big fan of his game and he should continue to blossom into more of a household name around the league. Free agent signing Bernardrick McKinney was an underrated addition in my opinion. I think he starts next to Baker, giving them a longer, lengthy backer that has been very productive over the course of his career. The depth here is good as they get back both Vince Beagle and also Alandon Roberts from injury, both of whom are really good players. Sam Egwavon, the former CFL star, and Brennan Scarlett help round out the core and perform well when their number is called. Hopefully things can smooth over between the Dolphins and their best defensive back, Xavier Howard, who's coming off of an all pro 10 interception season. He's truly a difference maker out there on the corner. He and Byron Jones form a top tier duo on the back end for Miami. And they truly hope that second year player Noah Igbenogany takes a significant step forward this season and is able to wrestle away the nickel job from free agent signee Justin Coleman. Now both Coleman and Jason McCourty were brought in as veteran safety valves just in case Igbenogany isn't able to seize that opportunity or if they have to make a move with Xavier Howard. Now at safety, 
Eric Rowe is a matchup problem for opposing offense because how well he does in coverage. Brandon Jones was steady as a rookie last year and figures to be in line to start opposite of Rowe, but the Dolphins did draft Javon Holland out of Oregon in the second round this year, and he is a legitimate ball magnet, finding the football nine times in just two seasons as an Oregon Duck. He will find himself on the field a lot this year, giving Miami a solid trio at safety. One of the reasons for optimism for the Miami Dolphins is the fact that the passing game looks promising. We talked about the expected growth in Tua Tagovailoa's game, but you look at those receiving options, both at wide receiver and tight end. You have to love what you see on the depth chart. There's speed, there's explosiveness, there's game-breaking ability, there's savviness amongst route running, there's blocking tight ends. There's a little bit of everything uh, for this receiving core that can help this team blossom. So the passing game looks promising, which is something to be optimistic about. Also, if we look at the first two years of Brian Flores' tenure, they have gotten better every year. Even his first season when they were 5-11, and 11, they were competing each and every week. Last year, they were on a precipice of the playoffs. This year, expect them to try to push that window down and get into the playoffs and make some noise. So this team it was young, they're growing, they're becoming confident, and they're heading in the right direction. A cause for concern would be if the run game runs in the wrong direction. If this running game takes a step back then from what it was last year, which was mediocre, this could be a problem because it will make the offense one dimensional and that's not all of the pressure you want to put on a second year quarterback. Another cause for concern would be if Tua doesn't take that next step into becoming a prolific passer. He doesn't have to be Tom Brady, but he has to be a lot better than what he saw last year. He has to be good enough to erase what we saw from Ryan Fitzpatrick. If he can't do that, this entire offense could be in shambles because they need the most important position to play its best game all throughout the course of the season. Let's take a look at some training camp quick hits. We'll start with the camp surprise. Offensively, I believe second round pick Lyme Eichenberg will be the biggest surprise of training camp. I think folks will be impressed with how dominant he is on both ends of offense and how ready to play he is coming out of Notre Dame. Defensively, keep an eye out for Trill Williams, the safety from Syracuse, the undrafted rookie free agent. The Dolphins got themselves a steal because he was with the Saints after the draft but failed the physical. He went through waivers. The Dolphins put in the claim. They got him, and they got themselves a guy that should push for significant playing time in their rotation at safety because he can get out there and cover and also has the ability to be a solid alley defender. So I think both will end up surprising in training camp. The rookie impacts to me are easy. That's your two first-round picks, Jalen Waddle, outstanding receiver from Alabama, and Jalen Phillips, the outstanding pass rusher coming from Miami. Those two guys were drafted with starting in mind. Look for them to both start and make an immediate impact as rookies. The biggest X factor offensively for the Dolphins will be those two coordinators, those co-offensive coordinators, Eric Studsville and also George Gotze. If they can help Tua reach his potential, give both of those guys coordinator of the year. And I think Andrew Van Ginkle is an X factor because, again, he had five and a half sacks last year. If that can get to 10, maybe 11 sacks, that means that he's doing a great job, but also Jalen Phillips opposite of him is doing a fantastic job as well. So I think him doing very, very well kind of eliminates the ability to double team Jalen Phillips. So look for Van Ginkle to me to play a huge role in this Dolphins defense in 2021. Taking a look at some breakout players on both sides of the ball, and you obviously have to look at Tua Tagovailoa. I think he got undue criticism last year. Think about it. This guy was coming off of a hip injury. You didn't expect him to play. You didn't know how healthy he was. Mentally, you didn't know how healthy he was considering that he was coming off that hip injury in an offense that wasn't really suited to his skill set. Now, he goes into an offseason knowing he's a starter, two years removed from the hip injury, with all those weapons on a perimeter, expecting him to take a huge step forward in 2021. And Noah Igbenogany, to me, is another guy that matches up athletically on the field, wherever you want to put him. Now he has full confidence in the scheme, understands what they're asking him to do and how to do it, so look for his play to increase this season as well. The road to the Super Bowl for the Dolphins goes as follows. I believe number one is kind of obvious. Tua has to turn up and become a dynamic player, throwing the football and help elevate that passing game and that offense as a whole. 
for number one to happen. Number two also has to happen. They're putting a lot of stock in what they drafted last year in 2020 along that offensive line. If those three guys, Solomon Kenley, Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt, come together along with the free agent signees of both Scora and the drafting of Eichenberg, if they can come together and become a consistent unit, this offense can definitely take the next step. And I think defensively, the pieces are there for them to be top 10. If they can be top 10 in defense and the offense gets better each and every week, the Dolphins can find themselves playing postseason football and getting to L.A. in February. I have the Dolphins finishing third in the AFC West. They'll be on that cusp of a playoff berth once again this season. Defensively, they are there. I think they can compete right away. The passing game will take their step forward this year, I think we'll see a much better output for Tua Tagovailoa, but the run game, or lack thereof for that matter, will be the reason why I believe the Dolphins won't push for the division crown. If that run game just magically appears, then you can definitely move them up the list. Because again, the defense is there. I do think the passing game will be there, but I truly worry about their ability to run the football. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plans NFL All 32. I am Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts and don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and leave us a five-star rating. That's where you can find our NFL All 32 podcast. It's D-U-E-U tell I see you by this point you're reading my mind it's time for football we about to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we gonna make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set to have a team become a unit man we about to keep this thing moving I'm about it you're with it let's do it we gonna make this thing official you heard me if you're the best then let's prove it the goal is set to have a team become a unit yeah